How's it going, Great A Nation? Chris Thomas here. Hope you're having a great A kind of day. And we're going to talk about a lot of things on this installment of Great A Nation. But first, I just want to toot my own horn. Because, you know, when this podcast started, when I would talk with people about it, they would say, Oh, you need a niche. You need a specialty. And since the audience that I was gearing for was men, they said your niche should be sports. Sports all the time. Pick a sport. Make a basketball podcast. Make a wrestling podcast. Make an NFL podcast. Some some nutcase even recommended, after a while, an XFL podcast. Now, look at where all those sports podcasts are now. What, what do they have to talk about? They have nothing to talk about. Their audience that wants to hear about sports is essentially listening to the hosts prattle on about nothing because there's nothing going on if you want to hear 80 episodes straight of oh my gosh tom brady's not on the patriots anymore you know if you want to hear that crap go right ahead but i don't think anyone's listening to those podcasts anymore gee papa you sure are nasty i'm i'm not being nasty uh jeremy gable I'm just saying that a lot of people were telling me that if I entered this realm, that I would not succeed because I was talking about you know, current events and uh, talking about my life and people wouldn't find that interesting. Well, uh, you know, you know uh, it seemed like they were right. No, they were not right. The audience keeps growing and growing. We're on Pandora now. We're on Deezer now. Deezer? These nuts? No, cut it out. We're on Deezer, which is a very popular app. I mean, we're, we're really um, really doing well, I, I, I just have to say. And to all those idiots that said, oh, yeah, uh, j- just do a sports podcast. Focus only on sports. Sports, sports, sports. I would have been, uh, you know, up Poo Poo uh, Creek without a paddle. What? You know what I mean. I just can't say the word. So there's that. And then another element that I wanted to get into Another element, oh Jesus, that's a freaking, you know, Tonight Show monologue, I mean, dang. Well, Jeremy, it's been a while since I've uh, been uh, doing the podcast. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a good point, you know, what happened? Well, I mean, a lot of people have had to adjust with what's been going on with the virus. I'm not sure if... I'm even allowed to use the term. What? Why is that? Well, because, you know, there are certain um, potential advertisers and filters on uh, some platforms that don't want the word to be used. What word is that? Well, you know, I'm, the the virus, the virus that came from a particular country in Asia. Oh, yay. The coronavirus. What? I, I, I'm not sure if we're allowed to use that term. What do you mean we're not allowed to use that term? That's what it's called. I know, but, you know, if the podcast gets uploaded and then it's run through all the different... Um, automated scanners they're thinking that my 
the podcast episode is actually about, uh, you know, that particular um, thing. And that leads to trouble. What? I'm just saying that now more and more they're getting strict with, you know, certain words that you can use. And if we keep using that word, they're going to think that we're like a health-related podcast. And they're going to say, hey, uh, this person's spreading misinformation. And, you know, block the podcast, censor it. And uh, some advertisers don't want to be associated with talking about that that thing. Boy, you, you sure are a, a, a whore, aren't you? What? Uh, it's not a matter of being a, a, a whore. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to use that term. Oh, wow. This is really getting, this is getting wild, Papa. Well, it's just the thing where I just want to be careful. I want to be sure that we have a, a program that is going to be able to get advertisers. That's not going to be uh, censored in any way. So uh, just for the sake of conversation, I'm going to call it uh, Orange Chicken Virus. Oh, whoa, is that much better? I think so. I think so. Uh, Orange chicken virus. Okay, so the orange chicken virus has come. And it has spread widely all over the world. And it's induced a lot of fear amongst people. Uh, We talked about it in the last installment of uh, Great A Nation. Um, It just seems like people are... Engaging in uh, panic-like behavior, panic buying, you know, buying things that you don't even need, buying tons and tons of food such that people who are just trying to feed their family for the week, they go to the store, there's nothing there. Well, uh, that 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 is a that's a fair point. I will say. I mean, you do make a good point there. Well, thank you. Finally, someone gives me credit. So, it, it, it just seems like with all of this madness going on, uh, it's actually helped to make relations uh, a bit better with the family. Oh, is that right? I mean, yes, I've been talking more and more with mother, and it's been less strained. Uh, I've been taking on kind of a a consoling role. Oh, is is that right? Yeah, I I mean, she's been calling uh, very upset because when she goes to the grocery store, uh, sometimes she can't even get inside because the line is so freaking long and then there are times when she's able to get inside but it's uh so packed that she gets overwhelmed and that starts making her you know get nervous and also she has those feelings of nervousness and then she sees so many shelves and there's nothing on the shelves and so she calls me and she's crying and you know my mom is not one to um display uh that kind of emotion for most of my life but more and more now I mean she seems to be open with you know crying and it's it's kind of different. It's something I have to adjust to. Oh, wow. So, uh, how much do I charge for this uh, therapy session? <laughs> I'm just talking with the audience about things that are really happening. And I just find it interesting that, you know, this orange chicken virus has potentially brought... Uh, my family closer together in a way. Oh, 
well, bravo. You know, I don't have a, a, a cent to my name. I'm a travel agent. Yes, I know. Jeremy Gable's Travel Express. Can you put some oomph into it? It's Jeremy Gable's Travel Express. Yes, Jeremy. Okay, so I understand that in the midst of orange chicken virus, there's a lot of things going on. And one of those things is that people are afraid to travel. And there are also these restrictions on going to certain places. And you're not sure if the government is going to place restrictions on travel to areas within one's own country. There might be lockdowns. And there's also rules in certain states where you're not allowed to um, go out and, you know, go to uh, a restaurant, sit down. Uh, you're, you're not allowed to go to the movie theater. The movie theater is closed down. It's only, you know, uh, pick up food, uh, go to the pharmacy, uh, get some groceries, Get some gas at the gas station. That's it. That's all you're allowed to do. Everything else is closed. Everything's on lockdown. And so I know as a travel agent, that kind of limits what you can do. Well, you, well you, that's exactly right. And it's very distressing that after years and years of hard work and dedication that you know, I might go out of business and not have a dollar to my name. Now, I mean, I don't want you to exaggerate with the audience. I know you have some money on reserve. Well, I mean, it's not easy to operate as a small business owner to be doing, uh, you know, a uh, uh, work as a travel agent when no one can travel and no one even wants to travel far i mean they want to just do stuff in the community so that's that's got me thinking you know what can i do that's within a community that can get business okay so what have you been thinking of doing well, I, I have this idea, and I think it's going to work, and I'm actually a little reluctant to reveal it right here on, on Great A Nation. Well, I mean, if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to. Uh, it's just that, I mean, that kind of was the, the reason why you told me you wanted to be on. Well, I mean... I, I just think it's a good idea, and I wanted to run it by you and the audience, because I think if I promote it under the label of Jeremy Gable's Travel Express, that it'll do well. Okay, so what's the idea? Well, the idea is, all right. Everyone has been through a hell because of this particular coronavirus. Call it orange chicken virus. All, all right, all right, okay. Because of the orange chicken virus, a lot of people have been put through heck. It's been, it's been a very tumultuous time. So I was thinking that people would like to relieve stress. Well, yeah, well yes, relieving stress would, would be a, a nice thing. Well, my idea is that I'm going to uh, go to uh, local communities and lease out for a short duration abandoned Chinese food restaurants. You know, places that used to be Chinese food restaurants. 
Okay, uh, where are you going with this? Well, hear me out. I'm, you haven't given me a chance yet, Bob. Okay, so you have these abandoned Chinese food restaurants. And you create what's essentially an escape room. Have you ever heard of an escape room, Bob? Yes, an escape room is where... It's almost like a puzzle, a real-life puzzle. People are put in a enclosed space, and the goal is to try and get out of that enclosed space, try and figure a way out. That's right, Papa. So, okay, here's the thing. We're going to create an escape room where you're inside an abandoned uh, Chinese restaurant, you're locked in, and you have to get out of the room, and there's several, because we're going to respect CDC guidelines, we're not going to have more than uh, 10 people in the room, we're going to hire eight a Chinese stunt man to uh, essentially uh, frighten you. Gonna have Chinese stunt men frighten you in an abandoned Chinese restaurant. Yeah, yeah they're gonna be uh, coughing. They're gonna be coughing. Did you say coffin like coffin or coughing? You know, if you're gonna mock my accent, you're gonna you're gonna get it. I'll I'll give you one good right across the face, Baba. All right, just just okay. So these Chinese stuntmen are gonna be coughing. That's right, they're gonna be coughing. Uh, did you say coughing or coughing? Coughing. Coughing. So the stump men are going to be coughing. And the thing is, is that, you know, given all the heck that these, uh, uh, you know, uh, orange uh, chicken virus carriers. Now, wait a minute. I mean, the, the, the people that you're hiring, I mean, they don't have uh, orange chicken virus. Yes, that's right, Papa, but, you know, people from that background, uh, their, their, the, from, for their heritage is of that country, okay? Of that country. All right, so you're hiring stuntmen to cough on someone as they try to escape from a room, uh, but... The, the people coughing are not actually sick with anything. They don't have any symptoms. They don't have the actual orange chicken virus. That's right, Papa. Exactly. There we go. You're, you're, I think your brain cells are starting to function. Well, thank you. But what's going to happen? Because, I mean, we've been talking about Okay, this whole situation has started a panic. Don't you think that people are going to react a certain way? Well, that's the whole point of hiring stuntmen. I mean, come on, come on, think about it. So these stuntmen are able to take a punch if necessary. So you're pretty much putting these uh, Chinese stuntmen in, in danger, well, I mean, if if they're willing to make some money in this economy, because, I mean, let's face facts, we're facing a downturn, and I'm desperate, and these stuntmen, I'm sure, are pretty desperate, because there's no, there's no shows being made. There's no movies being made. Everything's on lockdown. <clears throat> so that... 
are, are you just gonna are you just gonna burp and not apologize well i mean i, I thought this was a, you know kind of a free and open environment well i mean be a little bit respectful at least say excuse me well excuse me i i, I apologize that's that's fair that's fair so these stunt men are not getting work anywhere. They're not getting jobs. So they're going to be working for me, Jeremy Cable. Jeremy Cable's Travel Express. And these stunt men are going to uh, do little pretend coughs. And the person locked in the room is going to try and get the, try and find the way out. And, you know, like you say, I mean, the person might start to panic and uh, react in a violent way, but I think the stump man will be able to, uh, to take care of themselves. And, and really, I mean, part of this is relieving stress, and relieving stress is uh, tied to sometimes uh, physical exertion. So you're actually encouraging the people locked in the abandoned Chinese food place to use violence against the uh, stuntmen, the Chinese stuntmen. Well, I mean, think about it. People's lives have been changed dramatically because of the orange chicken virus. And because of that, I think that they should be allowed to take uh, their anger out on on a few people hired to, to take a punch. So, so you're essentially encouraging violence then? Well, I mean, there's going to be some carefully placed weapons throughout the uh, escape room. And, you know, uh, the stun men, if, if they have to take a uh, 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 iron to the face. An iron to the face. Yeah, you know, I mean, take, take a, a clothes, a clothes iron to the face, you know. I, I think they'll live. If, if there's a baseball bat lying around and, you know, our guest swings for the fences, I mean, my stuntmen have to be prepared. So you're allowed to pretty much uh, assault these stuntmen because they happen to be Chinese or of Chinese background. Well, I mean, this is a way of getting people to uh, g get a smile on their face despite everything that's going on. You have to think about it. The world's changing around us. And it's all because of the orange chicken virus. And for a few fleeting minutes, people should be allowed to take their anger out on some stunt men that happen to look like the people who caused everything to go straight down the tubes. Wow, so you're pretty much creating a torture room more than an escape room. What do you mean torture? I, I said the stump men are allowed to defend themselves. And if they can defend themselves against a magnum revolver, so be it. Defend themselves against a magnum So someone's allowed to uh, shoot one of the stunt men? Well, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll uh, load the gun with blanks, okay? I, I don't believe you. I, I, think, I think this is the most ridiculous idea. So the whole point is escaping from the room, but if... Well, I mean, actually, uh, I'm going to be honest. It's just a way for people to... You know, uh, take out their anger on uh, the orange chicken virus people. I mean, I'll admit it. 
Oh, okay, so you admit it. So this is just an avenue for people to engage in violence against people who look a certain way. Well, I mean, it's it's a good idea. I don't care what you say. I, I don't. I don't think so, Jeremy. I think you should really go back to the drawing board. And I mean, think about it this way: uh, you'll probably be getting money from the government soon. Uh, because of the stimulus plan. I, do you think I qualify for that? With the money I make? Usually? Usually I'm rolling in the dough. And now I'm I'm, I'm selling uh, day, day old whoppers uh, on the street corner. Dale Whoppers on the street corner. I I don't really think there's a market for that. Oh, you're gonna laugh about that? No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't get up. Calm down. All right, Greta Nation. Jeremy Gable has just explained one of the most bizarre things I've ever heard. A uh, escape room filled with Chinese stuntmen. Where you pretty much have to fend for yourself against fake coughing. But it's really a ruse. And it's just a way for people to engage in in criminal acts against people who look a certain way. Well, boy, you, you have the... Jeez, you're, you're a sick guy. You, you just paint things in the worst possible light. All right, well, I wish you luck, Jeremy, and I wish everyone luck. Be well. Try your best to uh, be positive. Talk with friends and family as much as you can. Uh, I know the past can lead people to have angry feelings towards people that have been in your life but uh, now is the time to maybe consider reaching out just saying hello and uh, it's time to build bridges no it's not it's a time to take a blowtorch to a bowl haircut okay uh, well uh Check in with you later, Grade A Nation, and I wish you all the best. Take care.